Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple stylized statue of a dwarf. For this model I wanted to go really low poly, so I made it mostly here in Maya. And then after making the model I'm going to send this to ZBrush and do just a little bit of sculpting, not too much, just adding a few details. Um, but for the most part I want to keep this uh, the statue really low poly, so that's why I'm creating it here in my. So obviously I created a cylinder and I'm going to make the shape of the main body out of that cylinder. And I also enabled uh, symmetry to work with this since it's for the most part the model looks like it's symmetrical. Also the concept art is in the video description. So here I'm going to be adding, using the multi-cut to, to create the, uh, essentially what's going to be the beard of the, of the dwarf here. And I really like the multi-cut tool because you can use it to pretty much add extra details and just kind of change the geometry flow as well. So use the multi-cut tool to create uh, the beard part and just change the flow of the with the edges as well just so that the contour works better for the actual beard that I'm creating here and then for the eyes I'm also going to use the multi-cut tool as well and right now I'm not bothering too much with the uh, cleaning up the geometry obviously there are a few angons here um, I'm going to clean those up a little bit later once I'm done with it. First I just want to make sure that the model looks right. That's usually what I do, I focus more on making sure that the model looks good and then I worry more about the actual topology and just cleaning up angles and stuff like that. That way it just allows you to have more uh, creativity on how to, you know, how to worry about um, the edge flow or anything like that, you're just worrying about making sure that the model looks good because for the most part you can always change the edge the edge flow later anyway so like I said I want to keep this one super low poly so really geometric and obviously the concept itself it's uh, relatively simple and geometric as well which is obviously why I'm doing the model as a really geometric and simple model as well So the modeling itself was super easy and uh, you know just moving a few edges from basic geometry and obviously like I said I wanted to keep this super geometric so I even lowered the poly count at the base so that it looks even more geometric. And then I obviously make sure that there are no angons and just clean uh, stuff up. And then what I'll do is I'm going to use the naming tool. Uh, if you're interested in this tool, there's a link in the description. Uh, it's pretty much a really useful tool for renaming objects in Maya. And also replacing names and stuff like that. And adding prefixes and suffixes as well. Like underscore low, underscore high. So obviously I'm going to create the UVs. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a symmetrical model. So I just decided to delete half. And just do the UVs on half, of, half of the model. And for the UVs, for the most part, I just added some uh, UV cuts at the 90 degree angles. And use the layout option. I'm using the legacy options for the layout tool. I find that it just gives better, it packs things better in my opinion than the, I guess, the new layout options. And then finally, I offset the UVs and export as my high poly. So in ZBrush, I'm going to just Dynamesh the model because I do want to keep the um, the hard edges of the model. I will soften up a few, but uh, for the most part, I do want to keep the uh, the plane changes into in the high poly as well. 
and then for the most part I'm going to use the Dyna Mesh just to add a little bit more um, damage to the edges so that they're not completely sharp. So I'm going to keep a few areas sharp and some of them I'm going to soften up a little bit. It's, it's supposed to be a stylized statue so you know having hard edges and softening some I think works pretty well for this. And then I'm going to use the Orb Crack brush just to add some of the lines here, just to add more details. Obviously it's still, still working at a low subdivision level. I'm going to subdivide it a bit later. I don't have an image for the back of the concept art, so I just kind of have to make up stuff for that. Sometimes you have to do, sometimes the concept art, and you're not going to get a 360 look, so you can uh, get more creative in the areas that you don't really have a reference for. And then I also want to add an extra detail here at the bottom as well. Just because I wanted there to be something down there and not just be flat. And then I'm just going to divide it one more time. And essentially finish this up. And then finally I'm going to use the rock detail from the orb uh, brush pack just to add some, uh, some more detail to the surface. And I'm going to repeat pretty much the same steps uh, for the arms as well and later the other parts using pretty much the same tools, I mean the same brushes. And then I'm just going to finalize it uh, with the other pieces as well, doing the exact same process using the trim dynamic and adding some surface details as well. And then I'm going to export this as my high poly. As always, I always recommend you guys spend more time uh, with your high poly models. I try to keep it short so that the videos don't go on forever, uh, but I would probably spend more time here in the sculpting phase. And then obviously in Substance Painter I'm using the low poly and I baked the details from the high poly onto the low poly. And I'm using the stylized material that I pretty much use in almost all my videos. If you're interested in learning how to make that, there's a link in the description for that. Uh, but I'm going to use that here mainly. And I'm going to be, as always, changing some of the settings for it. I want to add some color variation to it. So I'm combining a few uh, kind of like blues with a bit of orange as well. And I want to sharpen everything by adding a curvature on it. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bake an AO, uh, but make sure it's only baked by name so that there isn't any weird baked AO between the pieces. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Here's the render in Marmoset 2 back. As always, if you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more of these videos, uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you hopefully in the next time. Would you like to learn how to transform this cube into something cool like a character or this room? I recently put together an intro to 3D modeling course which shows you all the steps needed to do just that. This is a very short video so I don't have enough time to cover everything. So click the link below now to get more details. Just want to let you know this course is for total beginners, so you don't need any prior experience. I cover all the steps from getting started with the software to creating cool props. Like I said earlier, this is a short video so click the link below now to get more info about the course and get started today.